Have you ever wondered why we knock on wood or cross our fingers for good luck? Well, today we're gonna dig into superstition, but maybe not in the way you're thinking. We're gonna see it as a window, a peek into our brain's ancient survival code. Turns out these seemingly irrational beliefs are a core feature of how we're all wired. Let's get into it. Come on, you've done it, right? You say something out loud and then you're frantically looking for some wood to knock on to not jinx it. Or maybe you've got that lucky shirt, the one you have to wear for the big game or an important interview. These little rituals, they're so much more than just weird habits. They are literally windows into the ancient operating system of the human mind. And this, this right here is the main idea for today. The tendency to be superstitious isn't a sign that someone's uninformed or silly, nope. It's actually a powerful, deeply ingrained survival instinct that literally helped our ancestors navigate a terrifyingly dangerous world. It's a feature, not a bug. Okay, so to really understand this feature, we first need to take a good, hard look at our own supposedly irrational brains. Because what seems totally illogical to us today, well, it might have been the most logical way to survive 100,000 years ago. So let's get on the same page. What are we really talking about with superstition? At its heart, it's all about making connections. It's a belief that pops up when we're trying to make sense of a world that's full of unknowns. We create a link between something we did and something that happened, even if, you know, there's no real reason for that link to exist. All right, let's jump in the time machine and rewind the clock. Why on earth would making false connections be a good thing? Well, for our ancestors, it was an absolutely essential piece of their prehistoric survival kit. The number one rule of the game back then was simple. It's always, always better to be safe than sorry. I mean, in a world crawling with predators and all sorts of unpredictable dangers, being a little too cautious was the only real way to stay alive. And that principle shaped our brains to make certain kinds of mistakes and avoid others at all costs. This brings us to two really crucial types of errors that our brains are constantly trying to navigate. First, you've got a type one error or a false positive that's believing something that isn't actually true. Then you have a type two error, a false negative. That's when you don't believe something that is true. For our ancestors, one of these was way, way more dangerous than the other. And this example just perfectly illustrates the difference. Okay, picture it. You're an early human. You hear a rustle in the tall grass. Now, if you make a type one error, you assume it's a lion, but it's just the wind. What's the cost? Eh, you waste a little bit of energy running away. No big deal. But what if you make a type two error? You assume it's just the wind when it's actually a lion. The cost? Your lunch. Everything. So this is the whole point, right? Evolution aggressively, aggressively selected for brains that made tons and tons of harmless type 1 errors, seeing patterns that weren't there, just to avoid making a single fatal type 2 error. Our brains are literally designed to be overly cautious, pattern-detecting machines. There's even a kind of logic for it, this simple formula. Basically, an action, like running away from a noise, is a good idea if the tiny, tiny probability of a benefit multiplied by the huge size of that benefit, like, you know, surviving, is greater than the small cost of taking the action. Even if a threat is super unlikely, if the benefit of reacting is staying alive, it's almost always a good bet. It's a gamble where it pays to believe, just in case. Okay, so now we get the evolutionary why, but what about the psychological how? What is actually happening inside our minds that makes us connect all these random dots in the first place? Well, psychology points to three big drivers here. First, we all have this deep, deep need for a sense of control and predictability in a world that often feels chaotic. Second, our brains are just naturally biased to find patterns in everything, even in completely random noise. And third, these beliefs can be a really powerful way to cope with the anxiety and fear that uncertainty brings. The psychologist Daniel Kahneman gave us this fantastic model for this. Think of your brain as having two operating systems. You've got system one. That's your gut reaction. It's fast. It's automatic. It's totally intuitive. Then you have system two. That's your slow, deliberate, critical thinking mind. And here's the thing. Superstitions are born in system one. They are those quick, effortless connections our brain makes running on that ancient better safe than sorry software. It's the rustle in the grass, the lucky charm, that gut feeling. All of that stuff fires off before our slower, more logical system two even has a chance to wake up and have its coffee. So how does this ancient system play out in our modern world? Well, this brings us to the role superstition plays today in how we try to manage luck, fear, and our constant desire for control. 
we can kind of split superstitions into a couple of categories. First, you've got the good ones. You know, these are things like carrying a lucky penny or crossing your fingers. They're usually based on a belief in good fortune, and they mostly just help us feel less anxious and give us a little feeling of control over what's about to happen. But then you've got the other side of the coin, bad superstitions. Think about walking under a ladder or being terrified of a broken mirror. These are rooted in a fear of the unknown. And instead of making us feel better, they often crank up our anxiety and make us actively avoid certain things. So you can see the split pretty clearly, right? The good stuff is all about hoping for positive outcomes and giving ourselves a sense of power. The bad stuff is about trying to avoid negative outcomes, which, ironically, often just ends up feeding our anxiety. But you know, there's also an ugly side to all this. When we start thinking our success came from a lucky charm instead of our own skill and hard work, we're actually shortchanging ourselves. And maybe more importantly, if we rely on luck too much, we might switch off our critical system to thinking at the exact moment we need it most to solve a real-world problem. And this leads us to a really important final question. In our modern, data-driven, scientific world, is this ancient mental software just outdated? Is it obsolete? Not even close. Our pattern-seeking brain just finds new, modern things to create patterns about. I mean, think about those chain posts on social media that promise you good luck if you share them, or the weirdly specific rituals some traders have on Wall Street. Even the way we talk about the algorithm, like it's some magical, all-powerful force we can't understand. That's a kind of modern superstition. And that brings us right back to where we started. Superstition isn't a glitch in our mental software. It's a feature. It is the echo of a brilliant survival strategy that worked so well for our ancestors that it is still running in the background of our minds today, right now. This quote just nails it, doesn't it? Our brains evolved to make thousands, maybe millions, of wrong connections, just to make absolutely sure we caught the few right ones that meant the difference between life and death. The superstitions we still have today are just the harmless leftover byproducts of that life-saving evolutionary trade-off. So, the next time you find yourself knocking on wood, maybe don't just brush it off as being irrational. Take a second and recognize it for what it is, an echo from a time when it really, really paid to be cautious. And then maybe ask yourself, what other ancient code is still running in my life? Thanks for joining this explainer.